Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this, the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. A uh, special welcome to those who are guests with us today. We're so glad to have you here. A uh, special shout out to those of you who are worshiping with us via our YouTube channel, our Christchurch YouTube channel. We're so happy you found us here and um, we're able to participate in this way and want to remind you that you are always welcome to join us on Sunday mornings live uh, via Zoom on, um, if you go to www.comchristchurch.org, you can find the link to join us via Zoom every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. All right, we will um, continue now with our community news and I'll ask Inga to share the screen and we will share some news going on in our community. First of all, as always, we want to remind you that a wonderful way to stay connected to our congregation is through the Faith News a weekly e-newsletter emailed out to everyone. And you can sign up for that by checking in with Rachel Jans, our administrator at admin at comchristchurch.org. It's a great way to find out what's happening uh, in worship coming up Sunday, other activities and events, and also uh, events happening around our community. So check it out. Also, another wonderful way to stay connected is a uh, Crafts Coffee and Connection Fellowship time every Saturday via Zoom, 10 a.m. to noon, hosted by Violet Thetford. Wonderful opportunity just to be in fellowship and to share what's going on in your life right now. As I mentioned before, Christ Church has a YouTube channel. If you um, are uh, unable to join us for worship on Sunday morning, this is an opportunity to check in and um, we upload the worship service. It's usually up and ready by Sunday afternoon for you to partake. And um, sometimes other um, videos, other content is up there as well. You can subscribe and also ask to receive notifications so you know when the newest content has arrived. Our um, our last text talks for a while um, is coming up this Thursday, April 29th from 7 to 8.30. We will be discussing the texts that will be in worship for the month of May. And um, then after that, we're going to take a break for the summer and resume either late August or early September. Another way to stay connected to our community is to join our prayer team email list. This is an opportunity to hold our folks in prayer as prayer requests come forward. We send them out via email to the prayer team and invite people to, um, to join in corporate prayer for these concerns. And you can uh, sign up by visiting our website um, slash prayer, the prayer tab. You can also email Rachel and she can add you to the list as well. want to remind you that the Oregon Synod Assembly is coming up next weekend, Friday, April 30th through May 2nd, uh, actually through May 1st. I, I keep saying that, but it's through May 1st. Um, and um, we have two voting members uh, besides myself, uh, Mark and Inga Henderson. Thank you to them for being our voting members for this. Um, and. And that's not the only way you can participate. If you are not a voting member, but would still like to check in, you can watch the assembly live on the Oregon Synod YouTube channel. And also, um, and this will not be live, this will be um, only on Zoom, but um, we have 12 clusters across the Oregon Synod. Clusters are groups of congregation, kind of grouped by region, um, by geographical region. And we are hosting a virtual cluster dinner on Friday, April 30th, 6.30 to 8. The topic, what might true reparations for our participation in racist systems look like for the Oregon Synod? We have put together a wonderful uh, virtual house party for sharing that story and reflecting on that with one another. It's an opportunity to get to know folks in our cluster. We are part of the Sunset Cluster. 
pretty much all the um, ELCA Lutheran churches in Washington County and a couple more. Uh, opportunity to get to know folks and also to learn one of the many stories, uh, land stories in our synod, particularly related to where the Oregon Synod office sits in North Portland. So I invite you to check that out. You can find the links to those to um, register in our faith news. And that concludes our community news time. So now I invite you all to uh, remain muted and to join in singing with our worship team as um, they sing All Who Are Thirsty.
Thank you to our worship team for that wonderful rendition of All Who Are Thirsty. Our worship continues now with the hearing of God's word in scripture. I'm going to share my screen to share the text with you now. Our reading for today comes from the book of Acts, the eighth chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked him, do you understand what you were reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. This is God's good news for us today. Amen. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I'm going to continue to share because I want to go back through these verses again um, a little bit more in depth. Um, this will be a different kind of message, I guess, in the sense that I'm not going to, I'm going to keep uh, kind of preaching as we go through the text and sharing some um, some ideas about the meaning of this text for us today. Let me begin by saying that I love this story. We need to be reminded that this is a time of conflict in the church. The story we just heard before was the stoning of Stephen, a uh, stoning of Stephen that came out because the church was growing and within that was conflict and tension between differing groups. It's messy. It's convoluted, it's complicated and complex, and yet the spirit uh, is tenacious and untamable in this work. And so uh, the, the persecution is ramped up by this point, and the apostles have scattered to different areas uh, around uh, outside of Jerusalem. And then Luke, the author of Acts, gives us this story. So let's get back into the text here. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. I think it's important that Luke tells us that this is a wilderness road. When we look back through the stories of scripture, we often see that it is in the wilderness that God is active whether it's Jesus out in the wilderness for 40 days, whether it is the Israelites crossing the wilderness for 40 years. 
this is a story about where the spirit meets us out in the wilderness. And again, this is that untamable, ten un uh, tenacious rather, Holy Spirit, because even in the midst of persecution and the scattering of the apostles, the spirit is still saying to people like Philip, uh, we still have work to do. Another way that we might think of the um, untamability of the spirit is the fact that the angel comes to Philip. You might not remember this, but last week when we read the story of Stephen, there were seven deacons named, seven people appointed to wait on tables. The first one was Stephen. The second name was Philip. This is another person assigned to wait on tables. And yet clearly he is not waiting on tables. He is out in the wilderness doing the bidding of the spirit. So the spirit, no matter the best laid plans of the leadership of the human understanding of divide and conquer and how to get things done, the spirit has other ideas of how this is going to happen. Now, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. I'm going to stop there for a second. In those days, the word Ethiopian did not necessarily mean somebody from the country of Ethiopia. The word Ethiopian literally means burnt face. Ethiopian was a way to describe dark-skinned people from Africa. And the court official, he was a court official of the Candace, we would say, but in, um, in the Greek, that would be Kandake, which was a female uh, high official, still not higher than the men, um, and actually in the, in the area of, of Nubia in, in uh, Northern Africa. So um, this is a court official, a high ranking court official, but we also know that the Ethiopian is a eunuch. Now that means that he has been castrated. And most of the time when we understand somebody to be a court official and to be castrated, they might be powerful. They might find themselves in powerful spaces. They might be given lots of responsibility, but at the end of the day, they are still a servant, perhaps even a slave. So their freedom is limited. And that doesn't, and, and so that really challenges our idea of either or, right? It isn't, it isn't either, either the eunuch is powerful and in charge of a lot, or the eunuch is powerless and a slave. It's a both and situation. And this eunuch has means because he has in his possession the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Um, that, and, and also um, well uh, educated enough to know how to read. So um, already we are being challenged um, to think about the complexity. I'm, I'm reminded of what a friend of the congregation, Beth Russell shared with us last week in our workshop on identity, all the different things that go into our identity and how uh, sometimes those can even seem to be conflicting. So the Ethiopian eunuch, because of his castration, uh, is somewhere in the middle when it comes to gender and sexuality. And the Ethiopian eunuch is both powerful and a slave. So somewhere in the middle in the economic uh, reality of his world. But he is reading the prophet Isaiah. And he had been coming to, and he had come to Jerusalem, by the way, to worship. So perhaps he is either a, a Jewish convert or because of the Jewish diaspora, when the Jews scattered all around the regions, it's possible that um, uh, he uh, grew up in a family of Jewish people. The spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you were reading? Now we might think, why would he have heard him reading? Well, um, biblical scholars suggest to us that um, our way of reading silently in our Western world would not have been probably the way that people would have read. They would have been reading out loud. And so he would have heard the eunuch reading from the scroll. And let me just point out, this is another instance of the um, untamable and tenacious nature of the spirit. 
to send Philip out of his comfort zone to go over to this person who is very different from him and join in on that conversation. And Philip enters into this conversation, not with a proclamation, I am going to tell you what I know, but asks a question. Do you understand what you were reading? Opening up the possibility for conversation. And the eunuch replies, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now, the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation for his life is taken away from the earth. Now, this is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 7 and 8. I have it here in the same translation. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. Now, we've come to know this as one of the servant songs from the book of Isaiah uh, that in our Christian tradition point us toward Jesus, point us toward the coming Messiah. But this Ethiopian eunuch did not have that history, did not have that understanding of what was going on. And when we read the text and we understand what he has been through in his life, you can see how he might have been drawn to this text, how this text might have been calling to him, that he might have seen himself and his own life and his own um, uh, trials and, um, and uh, suffering um, lifted up in this text. And the eunuch, as we can see, the eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? You see, perhaps he sees himself in this. Again, Philip does not just decide to, to um, you know, evangelize with his pre-decided script, his rehearsed words, he is taking, letting the eunuch take the lead and ask the questions and using that opportunity to share with him his truth, his story. And he proclaims to him the good news about Jesus. Now, as they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? What a question. He doesn't say, hey, look, here's water. Baptize me. He says, what is to prevent me from being baptized? This is the question of those who have had obstacles put in their way. Can we be reminded that this is a eunuch, that this is a man of dark skin in a, in a land of people who do not look like him? This is a foreigner in these parts. And he is asking the question, what is to prevent me? That's a question that many of us ask. What is it that prevents us from being included in the circle of God's love? We look around our world, our country, and we see obstacles being put up in front of groups of people to keep them from being fully included in the community whether it's voter restriction rights or the anti-transgender legislation in Florida, we see the ways that people are prevented from being fully at the center of their communities. And we wonder about this, um, this eunuch who came all the way to Jerusalem to worship. 
it's very possible that he had an obstacle put in his way when he got to the temple. It's very possible he was not allowed inside. If we go to Deuteronomy, we read this passage. No one whose testicles are crushed or whose penis is cut off shall be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. If we take this literally, then we understand that the eunuch would not be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. The eunuch would be prevented from being part of the community. So his question is an interesting question. If we look hard enough, I believe we can all come up with reasons that would prevent us or others from full inclusion of the love and grace of God. Fortunately, it's not about us. It's about God and God's love for all of us. The God revealed in the scriptures, Old and New Testament, is always moving us toward expanding the circle of love and grace. Regrettably, the history of the church has often been about narrowing and shrinking and becoming more exclusive, that circle of love and belonging. In fact, you have noticed perhaps that there is an asterisk here uh, because there is a verse missing. I didn't even notice this until it was pointed out to me last week, but in this passage, we go from verse 36 to verse 38. But if you look at the bottom of many of your study Bibles, you will see a note that says later, later manuscripts where people added a verse. And this was the verse that they added. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. And he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see, even the early church was uncomfortable with this radical grace that would just simply say, you want to be baptized? Here's water. Let's go for it. There has to still be a condition. There has to still be something you need to say and believe. Which reminds me of the way we've talked about belong, behave, believe, rather than the traditional way of believe first, behave, and then belong. Um, this was already being turned upside down in our Acts passage for today. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with saying that you believe with all your heart and you say that Jesus is the Son of God. Nothing wrong with that. But the point is, is that the church is always finding conditions, ways to set up obstacles in front of people knowing that they are loved and included and belong. The eunuch commanded the chariot to stop and both of them, Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. You see, Philip wasn't going to set up any obstacles. And we might think, he is breaking the rules. We might think that he's doing something new, but perhaps a better way to frame it is to say that Philip is trusting the spirit and that Philip is taking into account the fullness of the biblical witness, leaning toward a more gracious and expansive understanding. In fact, if the eunuch had, uh, if his scroll continued into chapter 56, of Isaiah, just three chapters later, he would have read this. Whoops, I, there it is. Do not let the foreigner joined to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. And do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. You see, Philip is leaning in to this expansive understanding of God's love. When the spirit, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, this is cause for rejoicing for us as well. There is 
no obstacle between us and the love and grace of our God. And this calls us to follow the lead, to trust the untamable and tenacious spirit of God who calls us to invite and to welcome and to create space for belonging within the church, within the kingdom, within our communities, and within our lives and our hearts. May we as a congregation, may we as families and individuals gathered together to worship our God, trust in this good news that there is nothing between us and God's love, and there is nothing stopping us from sharing that welcome and that sense of belonging to everyone we meet. Amen. Our worship will continue now with, uh, as we break out uh, in uh, small groups, and I will um, create those rooms now. I will remind you that uh, if you would prefer not to go into a small group, there will be an opportunity uh, to just stay in the sanctuary space and, um, and there will be some music and images to accompany you as you spend time in contemplation, meditation, and prayer. And I will bring all of you back in uh, 10 minutes. You'll get in nine minutes, you'll get a little notice that still gives you 60 seconds to finish up your conversation and the breakout rooms will close automatically and you will be brought back to the rooms. Enjoy your conversations with one another. Everyone, our worship will continue now with the prayers of God's people. So uh, reminding you that I'll begin the prayers and then leave time for anyone to offer a prayer petition if you would like out loud, just unmute yourself and, and um, share your prayer. And after each petition, we'll say the words, God in your mercy and respond with American Sign Language here, our prayer. All right, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, God of the wilderness road, God of tenacious and untamable spirit, who calls us to expand the circle of love and belonging in the church and in our communities, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the witness of the Ethiopian eunuch and of Philip and of all those who have followed your way and whose stories we get to experience and engage with in your scriptures. We give thanks for your gracious and your expansive gracious love. And we now recognize that we come into this space with the days that have led up to this morning in our hearts and our minds, our experiences, our ups and our downs, and everything in between. And we take a moment now to lift all of these things up to your gracious care and love. Please hear now the prayers of your people. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for the new lives in our families. I pray for peace in our communities and for justice to be served. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, excuse me. Can you hear me now? Okay. I wanted to share with all of you that um, this dear friend family of ours, of Russ's and mine, um, whose daughter had um, glioblastoma 
she uh, passed away um, two Fridays ago. And it, it was very heartbreaking for a vibrant, a vibrant personality. Um, a family that Russ and I have spent. And um, Bev, Bev, your sound cut out. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, anyway, I ask that you will all keep uh, this family in your hearts and prayers um, as they deal with the loss of their beloved daughter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you. Loving and gracious God, we ask for your continued presence with all of those who are mourning the loss of loved ones through police violence. Today, we also especially lift up those who have lost loved ones in Baghdad and the hospital explosion. May your love and grace surround each one with your healing embrace and your peaceful and comforting presence for all. And may you call all of us to paths of justice and peace, of welcome and hospitality, of love and grace. All these things we lift up to you in Jesus' loving name. Amen. Our worship continues now with the sharing of the communion meal. I will invite you to find your communion elements and bring them close by. In the night which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as our Lord taught and you are invited to unmute your microphone if you would like. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us give this us day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead us and not into temptation, temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, from us from evil. evil. Thine, is, Thine the is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and, power and, the glory, and the glory forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. 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 The gifts of God for the people of God. This is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And all God's children said, Amen. We close our worship with another song from our worship team. We invite you to stay muted and sing along to Let Us Rise. And now go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Invite you all, anyone who uh, is able to stick around for coffee time after worship. Um, if you need to head out, we wish you uh, uh, blessings on your week and look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. <laughs>